Hello, in this video we'll take a look at how you can use the Entity Framework in conjunction with the ASPEN MVC project and use it to display data within the NetAdvantage Infogistics jQuery grid. Entity Framework is a very powerful ORM tool from Microsoft and part of the .NET Framework in the recent release of MVC Tools Refresh Code First feature which basically makes it as a developer you can write in your model first and when you run it it actually creates a database and all the necessary relationships and references and foreign keys constraints automatically. But in this example we're going to take the entity framework and we use the designer to create our model first and then use that model to connect to our grid control. What I have is the a new ASP.NET MVC project in Visual Studio 2010. I have already set up the project with the necessary references and CSS and JavaScript files to that. But if you really want to get into uh, how to set up your project to be able to consume infogistics infogist controls, then there's another video on that. So the references that I've already brought in the infogistics.web.mvc, this contains all the helper methods that we'll use to instantiate the controls within our views using the razor syntax. Um, we also have the CSS files in the content folder. We put an IG folder and everything sitting underneath it is the CSS needed for the project. And in the scripts folder, we also have the IG folder, which contains the JavaScript files um, that, that the controls will need. On the client, there are JavaScript controls and jQuery plugins, so it needs that to instantiate. In the views, we're going to use the, um, we're going to pull everything in the layout.cs.html because um, it's easier that way and everything is in one place and now I can go ahead and create as many views as I want without having to reference each of these necessary CSS and JavaScript files on, on all of my views. So in, in just putting them in one place now I'm free to code uh, just the actual uh, meat of my application and the UIs rather than have to worry about uh, if the references are going to be there or not. So let's begin with creating our model uh, in the entity framework and I've pulled in the actual northwind.ndf file into my project itself so it's a lot easier to work with. I'm going to come here to my project and I'm going to add a new item which is going to be the entity framework model and I can come to my data I can select the ADO.NET entity data model and I'm going to call this northwind I'm going to add that to my project, generate from database, yes, I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to use the built-in or the actual instance of the database that's part of my project. And I'm going to configure the default name, hit next. It's going to go through the database and get information. Uh, and I have all the table definitions here. I'm going to use a customer's table and I'm going to click finish. So what's going to do right now? It's going to create a model view uh, within Visual Studio, and I can see that my entity customers is now created within my uh, ADO.NET uh, data model. Once I have that, I can close this, and now I can start working on my MVC application and knowing that Entity Framework has hooked up the connections. So I'm going to go to my controller first. Actually, before I do that, I need to extend my model so that I can ping in the entity framework to get my data. And I'm going to get into my account models class, which is a default create class created in the MVC project. I'm going to call it public class customer model. And in that class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a static method that's going to return me the customer list from the Northwind database. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this code from the customer model class that I already have and I'm going to paste it in there so that we can quickly go through the through what it's doing. By queryable, I can add the reference to that. And what it's doing is it has a static method which returns I queryable on customers and I'm using a link query uh, that goes through all the customers and, um, and order, orders the data by customer ID. 
And then once I have that collection, I just return that back um, to the method. Okay, once we have the controller set up, now we can go into the, um, sorry, the model set up. Now we can go into the controller and we can add a action method that's actually going to return us the data. So again, I'm going to go to my notepad and I'm going to copy this four lines of code here and put it in there. Now what this is doing is this is actually taking, it's adding a metadata to this method, uh, grid data source action, and what does it, it takes in the, um, it gets called whenever the grid is ready to bind, and we'll define that in our razor syntax. So let me resolve that by adding the reference to inferences.web.mbc. And let's see what customer model. I made a typo here, so we can change that. And we can go ahead and update in our model as well. Customer. Okay, save that. Come back to our controller, save that. So now we have our model set up, our controller set up. Now we can go directly on our view and use the razor syntax to instantiate an input just grid. Before we do that, we can bring in the reference to the DLL so that we can now use Visual Studio IntelliSense with our with our views. So I have HTML.infogistics.grid and I can now use all the property settings for the grid. So for example, dot auto generate columns. If I wanted to set it to true here, I can even do something like um, caption, which taking a string, my grid. Basically go through all these different um, settings depending on how I want to set up my set up my grid. So it's very easy with these helpers and razor syntax that you get all the intelligence and all the support uh, for you to get started and kind of set properties and know at, at real time if you're making any com compile errors or trying to access a property that's not available in the control. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the Razor script that I already defined and I'm going to bring that into my project. And uh, let's go through that. So again, I'm using the Razor syntax to new up a grid in my MVC view. I'm giving it the actual um, entity that's going to use from the framework and set up an ID for it, setting auto generate columns to true, defining some columns using the Lambda syntax, um, setting some features. So you have paging and um, you have sorting and a selection enabled under the feature collection. And finally, I'm just setting some other properties so that we have the data source set to our customer list, which is defined in our controller. And then we're setting up some width and height and finally calling the data binding and render method. Now these two are necessary for the grid to be able to connect to the data and it render is required for the MVC razor syntax so that the, the view is now able to render the control out. So once we have that, and actually run this project. So here, just by doing that, um, using the ASP.NBC and the entity framework data model, we're able to connect to our Northman database, get the customer information, just using some wizard, defining our, our connection. And then, and then in the model, we're just using the link query to get the data and then pass it on to the view when the grid calls uh, the, the, the customer list method. And you can see that it has all the records from the customer table. Um, you have all the features now working in the grid as defined in the razor syntax. Um, you have selection and uh, paging enabled. Um, you have the drop down for the pager uh, size, the number of pages you want to show on the records. It's all built into the grid. And it looks nice and styled using the CSS settings that we have applied to it. So in this video, you saw that how quickly and easily you can connect a InfoGistics jQuery grid to the entity framework data model.
Thanks for watching the video. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.